our traveling together was fate. Are you ready? I will not bring shame to this name. Thus, I must keep going. I must become the sword and aegis of the people. For Mondstadt, as always, is the motto of the Gunhilder clan, the oldest family of knights in the City of Freedom. Their lineage traces back 3,000 years, when the family's eponymous matriarch deserted the tyrant king, Decarabian, and joined with a small wind spirit, soon to become the animal Archon Barbados, in overthrowing the God of Storms' rule. They were victorious and, ever since, those of Gunhilder's clan have had strong ties of faith to the God of Anima. Jean is the eldest daughter of Frederica of the Gunhilder clan living in Mondstadt today. She was raised and trained in all things a knight must know from a very young age, as Frederica groomed Jean to one day succeed her and receive the mantle of leadership of the knightly family. Jean exceeded in all of her studies and training, from etiquette to history, discipline to swordsmanship. Her focus, skill, and her dedication is matched by few. The acting grandmaster of Mondstadt, a strict and impeccable woman. Her flawless etiquette knows no fault. Even her letters are meticulously written and creased according to the prescribed rules. Jean's conduct and aptitude are renowned even outside of Mondstadt, though the effort for keeping up with such a reputation can take its toll. After the Grand Master left on his expedition, all the affairs of the Knights of Favonius, both big and small, have been left up to Jean. If only there was more I could do to help her. Varka, the Knight of Boreas and the Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius, has been absent for half a year by the time the Traveler arrives in Mondstadt. He took with him the Knight's elite forces, leaving Jean in charge as the acting Grand Master. Grand Master Varka is the legend of his generation. On the day of his triumphant return, I shall be sure to personally introduce you to him. I'm sure you too will be in awe of his greatness. Called the Titan of the Knights of Favonius, Varka is opposite in many ways to Jean. Aloof, unruly, and disorganized, he is nevertheless recognized as the most powerful person in all of Mondstadt, and his laid-back and charismatic nature makes him very popular among the city's people. Jean herself looks up to Varka, recognizing his own prowess and genuine love for the people of the realm, and she took it upon herself to ensure that everything would be in order when he returned. The Grand Master, in his own jovial way, assured Jean as he was leaving that she was more than equipped for the task, noting that she had basically been doing most of his job for him already. When I'm wholeheartedly devoted to my work, all of my troubles and even my sense of time seem to just slip away. Hmm. Grandmaster Varka did say to me, Jean, there is no better candidate for this task. In Varka's absence, the people of Mondstadt have fallen in love with Jean at the helm. Her selflessness and courage in the face of any threat have only served to grow her reputation throughout the Vat, even amongst the enemies of the Abyss Order. She has served exceptionally well as acting Grandmaster. One can even say she is more reliable than Grandmaster Varka. Perhaps in our hearts. We all eagerly await the day she can become the official Grandmaster herself. All of the Knights trust Jean completely and give her the full respect and admiration of her station. Her command and mentorship has meant a great deal and serves to inspire not only the Knights but ordinary citizens as well. I joined the Knights because of my Grandpa. I stayed because of Jean. Jean is a gifted and dedicated leader. Seeing how hard she works makes even me want to help her out. The effort to maintain her duties and conduct took a heavy toll on Jean, both mentally and physically. She is nevertheless relentless in her work, often pushing herself to the point of exhaustion to try and keep up, viewing any gaps or failures as inadequacy on her part. Yet, no matter how incredible her work ethic and care for others is, she is still human and liable to stretch herself too thin. Poor Jean. She's always been one to push herself too hard while overlooking her own needs. No amount of coffee nor special concoctions from Lisa can keep Jean's batteries running forever. Thankfully, though, there are many around her that recognize her tireless efforts, which leads us, the Honorary Knight, playing an important role in helping to give the Acting Grand Master a well-deserved appreciation feast. 
only imagine how much pressure you must be under as acting Grand Master. And you do so much work all over Mondstadt. We thought that since you so rarely take any time off, we take this chance to throw you a party. Enjoy yourself, Jean. After all, you'll never let us do this once you're back at work. <laughs> Though sincerely appreciative of her fellow knights' offering, Jean is still quick to retreat from the limelight and get back to her dutiful watch over Mondstadt and its people. Yet, there are some who worry that this relentless attitude and commitment to duty is actually holding her back. Her unparalleled sense of responsibility is the sole reason why she still hasn't found her true calling. And yet, perhaps they simply misunderstand the romantic and idealized dreams of a young girl hiding deep below the surface. Acting Grand Master Jean. Well, what do you think of her? <laughs> yes, I couldn't agree more. Conscientious, courageous, kind and considerate too. <sighs> Reminds me of another good friend. Mondstadt has a long bardic tradition, with poems, songs, and heroic epics becoming the cornerstone of their history and culture. And Jean has long been enamored with the tales and legends of yore. One of Mondstadt's greatest heroes was Vanessa, a slave and gladiator who led a revolution against the aristocracy of a thousand years ago. Following her victory, she helped to found the current city of Mondstadt and established the Knights of Favonius to serve as protectors of the people and to fight against any who would try to become tyrants in the land. Vanessa became the first Dandelion Knight, also known as the Liontooth Knight, representing both the shield that protects Mondstadt and his people, as well as the sword that cuts through the corruption that would threaten it. Vanessa was the first Grand Master, a kind yet formidable woman. I have always hoped to follow in her footsteps. As the Liontooth Knight, she courageously overthrew the oppressive ruling aristocracy of her time. Then, she founded the Knights of Favonius and became known as the Dandelion Knight spreading grace and compassion throughout the land. At the end of her life, Vanessa was recognized by the gods for her deeds and ascended to Celestia, becoming the Falcon of the West, one of the four winds of Mondstadt recognized today. The great tree at Windrise marks the location where Vanessa ascended and remains a holy site connected to Celestia. Barbados, as Venti, visits the tree regularly to commune with the memory and spirit of his old friend and to heal himself with the divine magic of the tree after Signor's attack. Jean, too, visits often, as she finds it carries away her fatigue and helps her to refocus and gain strength to carry on her duties. Lady Vanessa, I hope your watch over Mondstadt remains unclouded. When Jean was only 15 years old, she received the title of Dandelion Knight, passed down through the generations to only the most distinguished people of Mondstadt. This also conferred the title of Liontooth Knight to her, making her the Lion of the South, one of the Four Winds, the only such title to be passed along to humans. On the day of her honoring, she visited the Great Tree, with thoughts streaming through her head like a torrent of harsh winds. She wondered how she could possibly be worthy of such a title. Only glorious victories are recorded in legends and history books. Surely even the Great Knights of old must have had their struggles. Wind, please show me the path. How can I be the protector that Mondstadt needs me to be? The protector that Vanessa was. Only, she won't need to find the answer on her own. Jean is supported by many, and her relationships with others give her the power to forge her own destiny amongst the stars. Not alone, but together with a united and focused Mondstadt. Even as new and dangerous threats loom on the horizon, she will ink her own legend for the history books, and she will do so with the help of at least one new and unlikely ally. The acting Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius is also very interested in meeting you, and formally invites you both to our headquarters. We, the Traveler, arrived at Mondstadt unexpectedly, but it was immediately evident the kind of relationship that Jean makes with everyone to whom we speak. Everyone is quick to make sure that we get the right idea about the acting Grand Master from the very start. Everyone's been put out of place by Storm Terror recently. But everything will turn out fine as long as Jean's with us. I, like any other citizen of Mondstadt, owe Jean my gratitude 
for her hard work. Perhaps the one with the most insight and understanding into Jean's heart and mind is Master D. Luke of the Dawn Winery. Formerly a knight and Jean's superior, the two have a special connection, particularly once we understand D. Luke's own sense of duty, shown through his acts of vigilantism and defending of Mondstadt, though his fate is for another time. Jean laments D. Luke's departure from the knights, though does so with understanding. Master D. Luke has his reasons for being so critical of the Knights of Favonius. I am not proud of the way things went, but I cannot change the past. Though we have gone separate ways, I can sense we share the same strong commitment to protecting Mondstadt at all costs. Besides Master D. Luke, there is one other in Mondstadt who is a kindred spirit to Jean. Literally, in this case. It is not widely known that Barbara, a deaconess of the Church of Favonius and a local idol, is actually the younger sister of Jean. Their father, a renowned adventurer named Simon Page, started anew in the City of Freedom with the Church, soon ascending to the position of the Cardinal of Daybreak. Simon and Frederica, their mother, parted ways while both girls were young, with Jean remaining as the heir to the Gunhilde clan, while Barbara went with Simon, eventually following in his footsteps with the Church. The two young women find their own ways to look out for each other, though they do not speak openly about their relation by blood. Acting Grand Master? Leader of the Knights of Favonius? Everyone seems to like her a lot. Oh, me? I... Of course I have nothing but admiration for her. The support of everyone, be they close ties or friendly acquaintances, particularly throughout the recent trials facing Mondstadt, such as the Storm Terror threat, has finally brought Jean a new understanding of herself. It is good to be here together with everyone. It has lifted my spirits. And it has taught me something. I am definitely more of a Dandelion Knight than a Lion Tooth Knight. The Lion Tooth Knight represents Vanessa's past, a past in which she fought hard for Mondstadt. But it was the Dandelion Knight that represented her hopes for the future, a future belonging to the newly formed Knights of Favonius. At the center of this epiphany is us, the Traveler, blown in by the winds of fate. And Jean is the first to appreciate our presence and efforts. Please accept the title of Honorary Knight and the gratitude of the Acting Grand Master. As I walk with you, the path ahead becomes clearer it's almost as if I have finally found someone I can trust. I am still not good enough. Ever since I met you, I have been indebted to you for your assistance. My gratitude. Wind, please forgive my selfishness. Not as the acting Grand Master, but as Jean. I hereby swear that my sword shall always go with you. And so, with the conclusion of the Storm Terror threat, Jean has found a new ally and friend, perhaps the one who can finally help lead her to her true calling and the fulfillment of her own fate. Igniting the dreamer and hero within, who knows where the path will yet lead her. Dandelion, Dandelion, ride the wind to a faraway land. Who knows, the wind might take it all the way to Celestia. As they say in Mondstadt, let the wind lead. Our fates have been intertwined from the beginning. Thank you, fellow adventurers and travelers from other worlds, for joining me on this in-depth look at my favorite character in Genjin Impact, Jean. This is the first video in a series I've imagined where I will be exploring the background of different characters and looking at their potential fates now having joined with the Traveler. Jean was the one character I wanted most of all when my friends first got me into the game. We were destined to adventure together, as she joined my party early on from a single wish of whimsy from the top of Storm Terror's lair, a moment that I'll never forget. Genshin Impact is a beautiful game, and its characters are rich in story. What I love most is how much of those stories are hidden in the not-so-obvious places of the game, including item descriptions, books, random dialogue with NPCs, and so much more so you're rewarded by exploring every inch of the world and its people. I look forward to showing you my next project. I have a few ideas already in the works. Let me know in the comments below who you would like to see next from these options. Or if you'd really like to see someone else, 
will let me know as well. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and hit subscribe so you know right away when the next character's fate has been revealed. Our fates will cross again very soon. Until then, let the wind lead.